So when you install the JBL Risk Manager, you'll notice that your screen is divided up into three major sections. The section up at the top is for your open trades, the section in the middle is for your closed trades, and the section at the bottom has to do with your account and how much money you have in your account and your overall settings. So let's go ahead and set up an account. To get started, I'll click on this Create New Slash Load Portfolio button. And to get started, I'll go ahead and just give it a name of JBL Demo. I'll click on the Create New Portfolio button. And now you'll see that I've got this loaded down here in the lower left hand corner. Next, I'll click on the Settings button. And this will allow us to control the settings that the program's going to use. This is divided up into four major areas. The top section has to do with your trailing and profit stops. The section in the middle is for your money management. The section at the bottom has to do with where your data is going to be coming from. And the section over here on the right has to do with the commissions that you're going to be charged from your brokerage. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to choose your default exchange. Click on this drop down arrow and you'll see that the program is set up to handle a number of different types of currencies throughout the world. So in this case, I'm here in the U.S., so I'm going to choose the U.S. NYSE or the New York Stock Exchange. And when you select your exchange, you'll see that the currency symbol down here will be updated to reflect the correct currency. Now up at the top of our screen, this has to do with our trailing and profit stops, and we can control these two different stops from this window here. Now the first one is what's called the trailing stop. A trailing stop is designed to follow your prices. And that is, if you're buying a security and the price is moving upward, a trailing stop will follow those prices and get you out at a more profitable position. If you're selling a security short and the prices are dropping, the trailing stop will follow the prices down in the hopes that it'll get you out at a lower price. Now to calculate a trailing stop, it can be done in a number of different ways. But the JBL Risk Manager uses an indicator called an ATR, or an Average True Range. And the advantage of using an Average True Range indicator to calculate the trailing stop is it incorporates volatility. And the nice thing about incorporating volatility is based on how much your security is moving around, this trailing stop will be adjusted. So for example, if you're buying a security and the price is moving up, but it's a very volatile security, meaning that it's moving around a lot, the trailing stop based off the ATR might be a little bit wider, allowing that security to move a little bit more. And the settings for the ATR or the trailing stop can vary depending on the type of trading that you're interested in. If you're a short term trader and you only hold a trade for a few days, you might be interested in selecting the short term. If you're more of a swing trader and you hold a trade anywhere from days to weeks, you'll probably want to choose the medium term. And if you're a position trader and hold trades for maybe months, you might want to consider using the long term. And then based on which setting you select, the ATR will then be adjusted. So what I'll choose, I'll just choose the medium term. So choosing the medium term, you'll see that the multiplier is set at 2 and my ATR is set at 8 periods. Now there's a second stop inside this window called the stop percentage. Remember when I said before that the second rule inside the JBL Risk Manager is never risk more than 2% of your account on any one trade? Well that's set right down here in this window. You'll see that the default is 2% risk per trade. So we're never going to risk more than 2% of our capital on any one trade. Well what this stop percentage level means is that if the trade moves against you, in this case more than 9%, but you're not at the 2% of your total capital account, this setting will kick you out of the trade. So it's just another way to get out of the trade if things are moving against you. And what's also nice inside of this dialog here is that all of these numbers can be adjusted. So if you feel that you want to use some other numbers other than the default, you can just click on them and change them to whatever you'd like. Now over here on the right hand side, this has to do with your commissions that you're going to be charged by your brokerage. You'll see the default is set at $9.95 here in the US. So what I'll do for simplicity is I'm going to change that to an even $10. So in this case, I'll get charged $10 for a long trade, and then I'll do the same thing for the short trades as well. And you'll also know that inside of this particular dialog here, you can also change it to a percentage as well, based on the size of your trades. So again, just adjust it to whatever you're charged from your brokerage. Now over here on the left-hand side, this has to do with where your data is coming from. Now if you have data that's saved or stored on your hard drive, you can tell the program where it should be getting its updates from. 
just click on the Add Directory button down here at the bottom and then select where your data files are located on your hard drive. But what's really nice inside of version 9 of the JBL Risk Manager is you now have the capability of getting a free internet price data update. And this makes things much, much easier to work with in my opinion. And to select the internet price data, just put a check mark in this box. And you'll note that you'll get a message here stating that it is free internet data. And what's highly recommended is that you double check the prices before ever placing a trade with your broker. So once you have your screen set up the way that you want it, down here at the bottom, just click on your Save Settings button. Next, I'll click on the next button over called the Manage Capital. This will allow me to put some money in the account. So what I'll do up here at the date is I'll simulate that I've started this account here in 2014 because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some historical trades for examples. I'll say that the account that we're going to set up is funded with $20,000. I'll click on deposit and now you'll see that that information is updated down here in the lower left hand corner. Next let's take a look at a possible trade. For this first example, I've got a chart of Boeing, and the template that I have applied to it is a trading strategy called the RMO. It's an extremely popular trading method, and the idea with this method, if you're buying a security or going long, you're looking for the oscillator to be positive, you're looking for blue colored price bars, and you're looking for upward pointing blue arrows. So let's say hypothetically that this is a strategy that I'm using here on this particular security, and we want to simulate that we bought this security back here at the beginning of 2015. And we'll see how the JBL Risk Manager would help us manage a trade. So first of all, let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit on our data. So I'm going to highlight this section of our chart. And I'll pick a pretty good trade. Let's say that we are following this security here. And we got a buy signal, it looks like, here on January 9th, 2015. So if we got a buy signal here on the 9th, let's say we got in on the next trading day, which in this case would be January 12th. So to simulate that trade, the first thing you'll do inside your JBL Risk Manager is you'll click on the New Trade button down here at the bottom. Next, click on the symbol box right here and we're going to enter the symbol for Boeing. So underneath the security box, I'll just type in the symbol of BA. I'll hit my enter key and you'll see that it'll do a quick lookup and from here I'll select the correct company that I want. So it's the third one down. I've got it highlighted and then I'll click on the OK button. Next you'll see that the buy date field is then highlighted so I'll go ahead and click on that and what we're going to do is we're going to simulate that we bought this back in January of 2015 and the date is going to be January 12th. I'll go ahead and select that and click on OK and that'll put in our information. Now since we're going back and we're simulating a, a hypothetical trade you'll see that the information is filled out from January 12th going forward. So let's take a look at some of the information that we have populated here on our screen. So as you can see here from this dialog, the opening price on January 12th is 132.24. So let's say hypothetically that we got into the trade at that price. So I'll adjust the buy price here. I'll change that to 132.24. And then you'll see that there's a quantity box. You'll see the recommended buy quantity is 28 shares. So I'll take the recommendation and I'll put 28 inside the quantity box and hit my enter key. And when you do that, you'll see that things will be updated here for you, telling you exactly how to manage this particular trade. You'll see that over here on the right hand side, you can see that the total that was spent on this particular trade. And then down here at the bottom of the window, you'll see that inside this box right here, it shows that our maximum risk that we're going to be willing to take is 2%, which is a maximum risk dollar amount of $400, and the risk per share equates a little over 14 points. Now this box over here on the right hand side called the break even, this is a fourth type of stop that the program also uses. And the way that the break even is calculated, it says that if your trade doesn't hit the break even point within 10 days, it would recommend that you get out of the trade. And the reason being, of course, is that if you're not at least breaking even within the 10 days, your money's probably better spent somewhere else. So let's take a closer look here at this first line right here. You'll see that we have January 12th, we have our open, high, low, and close. 
our ATR moving average, our stop loss, percentage stop, and so forth. Now, the current stop that if we were simulating that we bought this on January 12th would be set at the numbers underneath this current stop column. So in this case, it would be 118.67. And this number is coming from this column here called the stop loss. In order for the percentage stop or the ATR stop to be used as a stop for your trade, your securities price has to trade better than the break even within the 10 days. So your initial stop is set at 118.67. Your break even is 132.95. And if you look at the closes over here, you'll see that it finally closed above the 132.95 on January 21st. And for that reason, it looks like your stop then changed to the ATR stop. You'll see that the program will use the most profitable stop, meaning that it's going to attempt to get you out of the trade with the most profits. So in this case, your stop would have then been moved to 131.58. And you'll see that the stop remained at this level until January 28th. So I'll go ahead and scroll down here a little bit. And the reason being is, is that that ATR stop was bumped up to 137.01. So on a daily basis, this is what you'd be doing, is you'd be taking a look at this information, seeing where the prices are and where your stop should be placed. And also what's nice inside this dialog is down here at the very bottom, you also have a little diary here, and you can make some notes about your current trade. So let's say, for example, that I bought this security based on an RMO signal. Okay? And to save your trade, just click on the Save Trade button down here in the lower right-hand corner. And now you'll see that this trade is now stored or saved underneath your Open Trade section. And to open it up, just double-click on it, and you'll be right back inside that same dialog. So again, on a daily basis, we're monitoring our trade. And what we're looking for here is we're taking a look at our, where our current stop should be set. And as we kind of scroll down here through time here, you'll see that we finally got an exit here on February 25th. And the reason why we got an exit on February 25th is because our stop was set at 153.71. And you'll see that the close on the previous day was 154.38, and then it traded to 153.01. And for that reason, the program is recommending that we get out of the trade. So let's say that we took this recommendation and we got out at the opening of the next trading day. So in this case, we'd get out at February 26 at 152.31. So to exit out of the trade, down here at the bottom, just click on the sell date field. This will open up your calendar. And I'll scroll back here to February 26. I'll select that and click on OK. And then down here underneath the sell price, we'll say that we got out at the opening on the 26th of so 152.31. So I'll go ahead and enter that in. And then I'll click on the Save Trade button down here at the bottom. And now you'll see that our trade has been moved to the Close Trade section. So what's interesting about using a money management program to help you manage your trade is that once you enter in the information, you're no longer really looking at the chart trying to determine where you should get out based off the chart patterns. The risk manager is now telling you where to get out based off of the share price itself. So in this case, for example, we got a buy signal here back on January 9th, so we got into the trade on January 12th. And the JBL Risk Manager told us to stay in that trade all the way up until this bar right here, which was February 25th. And so we got out on the 26th, which was one day before this particular sell signal. So again, this is where it gets really tricky for a lot of traders and using technical analysis is determining exactly where to get out of your trade. And using the JBL Risk Manager, it takes all that emotion out of it and tells you where you should get out based on prices only. Let's go ahead and enter in another trade. This time we'll do a short trade. So let me go back here in time a little bit. And this time, let's take a look at a sell signal. So here's a pretty good sell signal. This one looks like it happened here on October 1st of 2014. So let's say hypothetically that we went short on the next trading day, which in this case would be October 2nd. So to get started, again, we'll click on the new trade button down here at the bottom. And since we're gonna be going short this time, Put a check mark in your short trade box. Click on your symbol box. I'll go ahead and type in the symbol of BA and hit my enter key. I'll select the Boeing company from my choices here and click on OK. Now for the date, I'll go ahead and click on this box. 
and I'll scroll back in time to October 2nd. There we go. I'll choose October 2nd and click on OK. So now let's simulate that we got short at the opening on October 2nd at 124.40. So I'll adjust my sell price here to 124.40. And you'll see the recommended quantity is 31. So I'll go ahead and take that recommendation. I'll enter 31 and I'll hit my Enter key. Again, everything's been updated here for me. So based off this information, if I got in at 124.40, you can see that the current stop that it'd be recommending is 138.30. You can see down here at the bottom that my maximum risk dollar has gone up a little bit because we had a winning trade increasing the size of our portfolio on the last one. So again, down here at the bottom, I'll go ahead and make a note about this trade. I'll say selling be a short based on an RMO sell signal. Okay, once you're happy with it, click on the save trade, and that again will save your trade underneath the open trade section. To open it up, just double click on it. And on a daily basis, we'll be looking at the prices and where our stop should be set. Our initial stop is set at 138.30, and you can see that the break even is set at 123.75. If you look at the closing prices here, you'll see that on the 6th, the price was at 126.26, and on the 7th, it closed at 123.32, and for that reason, we traded through our break even level, and now you can see we're using the ATR stop as the most profitable stop. So in this case, on the 7th, our new stop is set at 126.77. And as the prices are moving downward, you'll see that our stop is now adjusting downward to get us out at a more profitable price. And as we kind of scroll down here a little bit, you'll see that on October 17th, it looks like it generated an exit signal. And the exit signal was generated because our price or our stop was set at 120.69. And if you look over here on the 16th, you'll see that the price closed at 120.29, but then on the 17th, the price has moved up to 123.24, and since our stop was set at 120.69, it's recommending that we get out of the position. So let's say that we took this recommendation and we got out at the next opportunity. So in this case, it looks like we get out on October 20th. And again, let's assume that we got out at the opening of 123.39. So underneath the buy date field right here, I'll go ahead and select that. And I'll scroll back in time here to October 20th. I'll click on OK. And on October 20th, the price was 123.39. And you'll see that our quantity was set at 31. And we'll say that we bought back all 31 shares. And from here, I'll click on the Save Trade button. And again, our trade has been now moved down to the close trade section. Now, once you've closed out a few trades, then you've got some more information down here to help you out. You'll see I've got two total closed trades. I have one long trade and I have one short trade. And then through here, it'll give you all the statistics on those trades and how they worked out. And what's really nice about that is that this will also calculate your trade expectancies for you as well. The first one will calculate your trade expectancy based on all the trades, and then it'll break it out based on this case on long trades and also short trades. Another nice benchmark is down here at the very bottom, you have a portfolio comparison. If you click on this compare button, you can compare your portfolio against, for example, like an index. So let's say, for example, that I want to compare this to the S&P 500 over the same period of time. Underneath the security button, I'll just enter in the symbol, and the symbol for the S&P 500 is GSPC. Go ahead and hit my Enter key. And I'll go ahead and select it. And then click on OK. And then down here at the very bottom, you'll see that I've got my symbol GSPC. And during that period of time, for example, in this case, my first trade was placed on October 2nd. You'll see that the S&P 500 is up 9.09%. And during that same period of time, our trading account increased $593 for an increase of 2.97%. And then comparing our account against the S&P 500, you can see that it underperformed the S&P 500 by a little over 6%.